My name is Glenn Wakai. We're in Honolulu, Hawaii. I have two main jobs. One is as a state lawmaker, as a state representative here in Hawaii. But my real passion is my nonprofit work doing um, reach out uh, projects. And it's called Reach Out Pacific. And essentially what I do is I take surplus medical and educational supplies from Hawaii and I send it down to Micronesia and throughout the Pacific, also to, to the Philippines. I look at Hawaii and Americans in general. We're such a wasteful society, and particularly in the healthcare area. You know how, because of FDA regulations and all the stringent requirements, we throw away a lot of essential medical supplies. And what I do is I gather those things up and I take them to areas that are not under the federal uh, guidelines and, and take it to places that really have a need for these medical supplies. And by the same token on the educational supply, just because the book is three years outdated in Hawaii and in America, we kind of toss those things out. But in, in Micronesia, where they are still functioning with books from the 1970s and maybe 80s, having a book that was printed in 2005 is a real gift to them. So there, I just saw that it was such a win-win situation. Hawaii is already in the state of shipping its garbage out of Hawaii uh, because our landfill is so overburdened. So helping to keep some of these items out of the landfill and take it to places in Micronesia where there's huge needs, to me, made a lot of sense. So we've been at it for about five years and over that course of time, we've gone from moving a few boxes to the point now where we're moving three, four containers at a time out to that part of the world. And when you think about the Micronesian migration to Hawaii, it's similar to the Hispanic migration in the continent. Um, we hear often about how the, the migration is kind of a, a burden upon taxpayers of, of the uh, states on the mainland. Likewise, for the Micronesian migration, they come here, unfortunately, a lot of times because of lack of economic opportunity in their home islands, as well as because of health care needs. For example, if you lived in this place called Chuk in Micronesia and you get diabetes, you have two choices. You die in Chuk or you come to Hawaii for your dialysis treatment. So that, that's the unsavory decisions that the people in that part of the world have to make. So their migration here to Hawaii, as you can imagine, they're not, they're not coming here a lot, a lot of times by choice, but by necessity. So they're seen as kind of um, a, a group of individuals who we have to ramp up and get them ready to work, help with the education, uh, because a lot of times they kind of are popped onto our doorstep. So uh, the organization Reach Out Pacific also tries to get to the root of their migration by keeping them healthy and keeping them well educated, and most importantly, giving them choices to live out a full life with economic opportunities in Chukin, Honope, and the Marshall Islands and in that part of the world. So that's what we're trying to do is provide them choices rather than having to be forced to come to Hawaii or even particularly to the United States. Uh, I'm all about win-win situations and here's a winner situation where we uh, divert all kinds of needed products to places that really have these needs so and what drives me is when we do send the containers out um, I don't travel with the containers but I get the pictures back from uh, the the girl who has a wheelchair who wasn't able to have mobility before and now can get around American Samoa in a wheelchair versus before she was kind of a, a shut-in or seeing um, people who are getting mammograms or getting x-rays in locales that didn't offer those services before. As Americans we kind of take it for granted and here's, a, here's something that none of us in the United States would accept. When you're in Ponape and you have to go to surgery you're asked to bring your own sheets and linens. That's how dire the situation is. The hospital doesn't provide that because there is nothing to even line the beds. I mean, how unsanitary is that? But that tells you how destitute their, their communities are. And over the course of our five years, we've sent out about 25,000 sets of sheets from Waikiki hotels that we're gonna dump these sheets anyway. And we've diverted all of these sheets down to Micronesia. So over the, we were told, We've outfitted all of the hospitals in Micronesia with sheets for the next three years. So that's, that's what keeps us going, that it makes so much sense to take our surplus and our waste and send it to pe people who really need these items. Well, when they see that it's, it's, it's such a win-win situation, they would otherwise have to pay for that disposal, whether it's a medical supply or whether it's sheets from a hotel. They would have to pay someone to get rid of that. We come in there, take it for, from them, help them save on this disposal cost, and then 
for the businesses that businesses that want it, we give them a tax write-off since we're 501c3. So they are more than happy to give us their surplus items. In my political capacity, you see things from 30,000 feet. You dole out money to various departments and agencies and you create policy, but you're not really there where the rubber meets the road. You're not there in the classroom to see that fifth grader understand the beginnings of algebra. Um, so the nonprofit capacity allows me to be where the rubber meets the road. I don't have to worry about uh, what my other colleagues here thinks, think of a, a particular issue. If I want to get something down to Palau or down to Saipan, it goes. Um, and that's what I enjoy, kind of the freedom to make things happen because rightly or wrongly, the political process, it's, it's got a, a lot of inertia and it doesn't move very quickly. And um, I'm one that really wants to see action, get things get done. So that part of it, I, I find refreshing. In any locale across the United States, there can be a good concentration um, of individuals who want to effectuate change, but the greatest change is going to come from policy standpoints, whether it's funding issues, whether it's a policy that we're going to stop women from getting beaten, stop drug use, stop whatever the cause may be. Um, road to change have to go through the legislative process in every state in, in the union. So I think it's in, refreshing that we see so many young people engaged in wanting to see a better community but I also think that we have to give them the tools to understand how to navigate through the political process to make their dreams become a reality because it's great to talk about platitudes and a great vision but okay after that what's the call to action how to, do you actually manipulate or affect the process to get where you want to go and I think that's where we need to further the discussion and just talk more than just about generalities of where we as Americans and, and people in Hawaii want to go, but give them the tools to effectuate the, the change. So this is, I think, step one, but I think there needs to be a further step uh, across the nation to allow all Americans to engage the political process and make America a better place. Political world in any state in the union, it's unfortunately caught up in partisanship politics. Um, I call it accepted bigotry because in other areas, if I were to speak ill of you because of you're a different color than me, you're a different religion than me, that you have a different sexual orientation than me, somehow I get sued and I get taken to the mat for, for somehow saying something that's negative about you. But as Americans in the political realm, we accept the R's and the D's constantly are fighting with each other. Somehow we have to move that out of, out of the public consciousness about partisanship. It's not about power, it's always about the people and how do we try to disengage the, the, the power struggle to it being a struggle for the betterment of our community. And that part, I hope that people in Hawaii will understand and see the greater good rather than how do we wield power or how do we rip power out of the hands of the establishment.